Ladies and gentlemen, here we are, our first video of my very first playlist. We're actually reshooting all of these, but they're going to be a lot better. So, let's jump right into it. This first playlist is about the introduction to AutoCAD 2020, some of the basic tools, some of the basic features, the user interface, and pretty much everything in between. Please follow along, hit that subscribe button, and you will see a bunch of videos just like this. So here we go. You just got AutoCAD 2020. Maybe you even saw the link in the bottom of the video that actually lets you get the software for free. Go check that out if you haven't. And now you're like just wondering, how do I make this? Okay, how do I build something? How do I use this software? Well, here we go. Once you open it up, you're going to go to the A, you're going to hit New. There are a bunch of different templates in here. It depends what you're trying to draw. I generally stick to the ACAD template. This is just a very basic 2D template that you guys can use as you're drawing some of your basic things. In this software, you will notice that there are ribbons, we call them ribbons, at the top of the screen. And that there is a command line at the bottom. One of the first things I do to set this a little bit differently for myself, which by the way, anything that you do doesn't always have to be the way that I do it. This is just what works best for me. So I'll take this command line and I'll drag that down. I'll put my cursor over this area right here and drag that up. That way I get a little bit of space within my command line. And now anything that I type within that space will give me a pretty good idea of what the questions are that it's asking and what points it's looking for and so on. Okay. Um, at any point, if you're inside of a tool, you can always hit escape. And now you'll see it says cancel and you're not within any tool. If I was, for instance, in the rectangle tool, you'll notice that there are different options within rectangle. But again, if I hit escape, I am now not in any tools. A lot of times, a lot of beginner mistakes here is you'll be inside of a tool and then you're like, oh, I want to use the line tool. Well, that doesn't work because it's already inside the rectangle tool. So be careful. Always hit escape when you're done. Like I said, at the top, you have your ribbons. The most important ones that we're going to talk about right now is the draw tab, which by the way, if you drop this arrow down, you get other options of drawing tools. You have basic tools like the line, the polyline, circles. If you see an arrow beneath something like circle, you'll notice that there are other circles, two-point circles, three-point circles, tangent, tangent, radius. All of these things, if you just hover right over it, even for a couple seconds, it'll give you a pretty good idea of what that tool actually does, and it shows you a little graphic. You can do arcs, you can do rectangles. Behind the rectangle tool, there are polygons. A lot of times in the command line, when you click one of these tools, it's going to ask you a question. It's going to say, enter the number of sides. Okay, if I wanted a polygon that was like a stop sign, I would hit an 8. Specify the center. Where's the center? Anywhere I want. Is it inscribed in a circle or is it circumscribed? If you're not really sure what that means, just go ahead and Google that. But basically, if I hit circumscribed, that means that if my radius is 5, 5, enter, you'll notice that if I put a circle at the same center of that point, so go ahead, let me draw that, and I did 5, it will be circumscribed inside of that shape. The opposite of that would be, this would be just outside of the shape like that. So that's a very basic tool, um, nothing important. I'm just going to go through some of these. You've got your trim tools, your trim tab, basically. So all of this modify stuff is about modifying things that you've already created. So I have the move tool, the copy tool, if I want to make a copy of something. Stretch. So for instance, let's say I made a rectangle. By the way, you got to create something first, otherwise you can't use those yet. Let's say I made a rectangle, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle like this. Then I go into the stretch tool and it wants to know what do I want to stretch. Well, if I did the whole thing, that's not going to be a stretch. That's going to be more like a move. But if I did stretch and I just draw over the right side of this object here, and then I hit enter between because it's saying, hey, select objects, but you're not selecting anything anymore. So there's always an enter between. Then it wants to know your base point. Where do you want to grab it from? Let's say I want to grab it from here. I can now stretch that in any direction I want and I can type a number going in this direction. You'll see right next to my cursor, it says polar four, three, two. Well, if I want to stretch it five, enter, then it'll go five inches to the right side. While you're typing, the basic unit that AutoCAD is using is just inches. So you'll also notice, this is very important, that there is an X, a Y, and if we were drawing something in 3D, there would also be a Z. Those are basically just your very basic, hang on, those are your very basic uh, left, right, up, and down movements within any you know graph or math class that you've ever taken. So something that I like to use here is called polar coordinates. If I were to go to the line tool or 
you'll notice that if I hover over line, the word that's in bold here is line, which means that if I wanted to type line down here, I could do that. I could operate the entire software with just the keyboard and some of the mouse, or I could mostly do with the mouse. It's totally up to you and which way you prefer. If I'm in the line tool and it asks for my starting point, I could type something comma something, X comma Y. So zero comma zero would start me off at the zero zero point. If I want to draw a line that's 10 inches across, I can do a couple different ways. I can put my cursor on the green line going across. Also, by the way, if you don't have a green line, that's F10, make sure that polar is on. I also make sure that F11 is always on. That's object snap tracking, which we'll talk about later, probably in another video. And I turn off F12. F12 in this software, whoops. F12 in this software actually turns off dynamic input. So you notice now that there are things floating around with my cursor. I don't personally like that, so I usually turn F12 off. And there goes that again. Uh, but you'll notice that everything devolts down to the bottom now. So object snap tracking is the last thing that I did, but all it's gonna show is that everything is not by my cursor and it's down in the command line. So if I wanna go 10 across, I can do a couple different things. I can just put my cursor in the right direction and type 10 enter. And now that's a 10 inch line. You'll notice that it goes off the screen. So there is a tool called pan. We can pan over to see it, or we can use the scroller on the mouse to scroll out. There is also a trick for the pan tool. Rather than going into this tool and clicking on the screen, that actually boots you out of whatever tool that you're in. Let's say I was still on the line tool, but I wanna pan around. All I have to do is hold this little button here on the mouse in and then move my cursor around. So if I go like this, that's a pan. I can now go up, six, enter. Or I can go 10, enter. I can now do C, enter, which stands for close. Now that would close there because what I did was I started my new section at the end of this line. So let's try that again. If I go six up and then I go on this direction here and I go 10, and then I could just close it like this, that's called an object snap point. And now you have a 10 by six rectangle. If I want to erase anything, there are two selection boxes. But before we get to that, I could just single click something and hit delete. If I want to bring that back, like I, I made a mistake, control Z is undo. Or we also have the arrows up here. Redo, undo. How many things would you like to undo? We've already done a lot of things here. There are selection boxes. If I click on the screen here when I'm not in a tool, so remember, I don't want to be in line or anything like that. I want to hit escape first. If I click and go to the right, I get a blue box. If I go to the left, I get a green box. You'll notice that the blue box has a solid line around the outside and the green box has a dotted line. What that means is basically that if I'm going with a green box here, it's gonna grab anything that's fully inside of it and also just touching it. So in this case, one of the lines is fully inside and two of them are just touching. So I could go like that to get those three lines. But let's say I just wanted to select this right line and I didn't wanna just click on it. I could go up here and do my blue box this way. That's only gonna select things that are fully inside of that box. And then I hit delete. There are so many different ways to delete things as well. Control Z is gonna bring that line back. I could click and hit delete on the keyboard. Control Z brings it back. I can use the erase tool up here and hit enter. Or I can simply undo creating it in the first place. So there are a lot of different ways to do a lot of different things in this software and that's why you gotta find the best way that you like to do things. So next thing here, we were talking about polar coordinates. I could do five comma five. You'll see it was saying specify the first point. If you're a teacher like myself if you're and you're watching students and, and you don't know where they went wrong, you could hit F2 and what that does is it shows the history of their command line. So if they made a mistake, you could look at some of their inputs and say, ah, that's why your box is not 10 by six because you typed nine or whatever. You can then close that out. So I started this at five comma five. Let's say I wanted to make a five by five rectangle. I could do zero comma five which is basically just gonna be zero on the X and five on the Y. I could go back to zero, zero. And I could go to five comma zero, which is X comma Y, so that's five over. And then I could go back to five comma five. It's pretty easy stuff. Select everything with a blue box or a green box, hit delete. One of the other things of, of ways to type things into the software is called relative coordinates. So if you use the exact same idea like 0, 0, and now I'm looking to go to, I don't know, 
10 comma 2, I could also do at 10 comma 2. And what that basically means is that it's going to take where my cursor currently is and it's going to go 10 comma 2 from that point, 10 over and 2 up. Now when I'm starting at 0, 0, you're not going to notice a difference, but now look here. If I went to 1 comma 1, it's going to jump back to 1 comma 1, control Z. If I go at 1 comma 1, it's going to establish this point that I am currently at as my relative coordinate, where I'm currently uh, where I currently am. So 1 comma 1 is going to go from this point, it's going to go 1 1. And if I go at negative 2, you can do negatives as well. Negative 2 is going to go this way. Although depending on how you're looking at my video, it's going to go to the left on your screen. Negative 2 comma 5. What that's going to go is it's going to go 2 this way and then 5 up. And then again, I could just click this point here and close it, whatever that silly shape is. Select these things, hit delete. Something that's very important in this software is OS Enter, which is your object snap menu. What would you like your things to snap to? Those green shapes that you're seeing, that's an endpoint, that's a midpoint of a line, another endpoint. If we had a circle, you could see the center of the circle. You could see the intersection of something. So if I were to go like this and then go across, that X stands for intersection. If at any point you want to see more things or you want to see less things, you would go OS Enter. And those are the things that are going to show up. You could even turn the entire system off if that is getting in your way. If you don't like to see the grid, grid, and you'll see down here it says, hey man, what do you want to do? Off, right? Now I don't like that, I like the grid on. You could change the size of these boxes. These are dynamic boxes, which means that as you scroll in and out, right now I'm scrolling out, right now I'm scrolling in, you'll notice that the sizes of them kind of change as they go. Well, if you want to set that to a special size, like grid, I don't know, one, what that would do is that would make those boxes one by one. So now when I'm drawing, it might be a little bit easier, zero comma zero, one comma zero, to see that, hey, I drew exactly one box. So that's totally up to you well as well, that's a preference. The third type of system, I call these the three coordinate systems of the AutoCAD software, is called uh, polar coordinates, okay? So polar coordinates, I think I messed up the name of that first one, sorry. The first one is called absolute coordinates. That's your zero comma zero, x comma y. You then have your relative coordinates, which we talked about, and then you have polar coordinates. So polar coordinates kind of go like this. This is a circle, okay, obviously, and polar coordinates have to do with angles. So basically, that doesn't have to look that pretty. It's right here. You know what? Here's how to do some text too. If you drop this down, whether you want to do a paragraph of text or a single line of text, I like to do single lines all the time, it's going to ask for a star point. What is the height of your text? Let's just make it one inch just because. Uh, what's the rotation angle of your text? Which way does it read? Does it read left to right? Is it going to read from the center up? In our case, every time we read, it's always zero degrees. And that will make a little bit more sense when we go forward here. So this is going to be, by the way, when I do the degree sign, it's Alt 0176 and then let go of everything. And then you click off the text and you hit escape. So this is my zero degrees. I'm actually going to scale this other thing down just a little bit. Just so that the size makes a little bit more sense. Again, scale, you know, just a modify tool. I said, hey, I want to scale this whole thing. And then that was my base point. And then I just used my cursor to make it bigger or smaller. But you could also type numbers. Two would make it twice as big. 0.5 would make it half as big. So anyways, for my example here, I'm going to select this right here. I'm going to do copy. I'm going to grab a base point, which is going to be something right next to the number. And I'm just going to move this around to the four sides so I can tell you the four different angles within our 360 degrees, the four most important ones. So this one up here, anything that draws in the up direction is going to be 90 degrees. Anything that draws in the left direction is going to be 180. Anything that draws in the down direction, 270. And then all the way back to zero, or you could call it 360. So any of these, any of these 720, you know, all of those different numbers all will end up being in this circle no matter what you do. Okay. So here comes polar coordinates. The way this works is, I don't know why my mouse is lagging a little bit. When I'm drawing something like a line, what I would do, the formula for this is at some number, and then, so let's say at five, if I want to do a five inch line at five, 
And then if you hold shift and hit the comma, you get the less than sign. That stands for angle. So now if I did 90, that would mean a 5 inch line at 90. At 10, angle 0. That means a 10 inch line to the right. At 3.75, angle sign 270. Okay, so you kind of get the idea of how this software works. So again, you have three different things. You have the absolute coordinates, which are going to be, again, I'm going to type line here, 0, 0, or let's, let's go with something else, 2, 2. You have your relative coordinates at 5, 0, which is basically just going to go 5, 0 from that relative point. And then you have your angled one, which can still be at 5, angle 0, which is just a 5-inch line across, but it's more specifically to do things like, hey, I want a 30-degree line, and I want it to be five inches long, okay? We talked about selecting things. Green box means it's gonna select everything inside of it. Blue box means it's only gonna select, uh, sorry, green box is everything inside of it, but also just what it's barely touching. So like something like this would get two lines. The blue box would only get the one that's fully inside of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all these things. I'm gonna hit delete. And now I'm at a blank page again. Close this, no. Here's how I started, I went to new. I clicked ACAD, I draw whatever I want to draw, and then if I want to save something, I go to the A, I hit save as. Type in your file name, say where you want to save it. That's pretty much it. This is the end of the first video here in the tutorial. So we talked about the draw area and all the creation tools. We talked about the modify area and things that you can modify, mirror, fill it, all those types of things. And we'll get into some of these other things later on. But for now, take away the green boxes, the command line and how to type things you know you got to hit escape every time you're done with something and you'll see it says cancel your coordinate systems your absolute and i apologize again for mixing those up your absolute your relative and your polar coordinates all right thank you for tuning in go ahead and jump over to video number two or like i said down in the description there there is a video that explains how to get the software for free for various different reasons all right thanks for watching appreciate it